There are a couple of companies, I think, that I, there are a lot of companies that have done this well, but a couple just to name examples. Since we were just talking about personal care, Pangea is a fantastic example of providing um, a great performing product, but also one that gives consumers a sense of indulgence and um, really wonderful scents and things like that. Also a Colorado-based company. Um, ben & Jerry's was maybe the first brand to deliver a great tasting yogurt that I'm pretty sure no one would think is in any way sacrificial, um, except maybe to your diet, but uh, great products. And then Burgerville, a uh, fast food chain out west uh, that is a great food, convenient to buy, but also a very strong commitment to sustainability. Obstacle five, desire to reduce consumption. What we've been talking about so far is how we can grow the low house marketplace, which is what we're all here to do. It's what we're in business to do. However, I think we also recognize that there is an inherent tension between selling more stuff and being sustainable. And consumers have picked up on this as well. Uh, and we asked last year, uh, it, it, is that one way that you try to help the environment to buy less? And a surprising number of low house consumers, two thirds, said yes. It doesn't mean they're not buying, it just means that maybe they put a little bit more thought into whether or not they really need that product before they buy it. We also see a little over a third of the rest of the population does. But I think there are new business models, and Steve alluded to this in the beginning when he was going over the key insights that um, in the Reduce, Reuse, incorp uh, Incorporated key insight. There are companies like Zipcar or Bag Borrow or Seal or Dress Fault that are providing consumers with the products they need, but maybe you don't need to own the Gucci bag. Maybe you don't need the dress that you're only, to own the dress you're only gonna wear once. You can share those with other consumers. Six, time scarcity, which is also true of this presentation, so I'm going to move quickly through this. Um, we're all feeling stressed for time. Uh, we all have a lot on our plates and a lot of different things trying to capture our attention, and this is, very true of sustainability as well. 77% of consumers say that all companies are telling, or are saying they're environmentally friendly and it's hard to tell who's telling the truth. And only 16% research a company's environmental and social responsibility before they buy the product. So we have a lot of consumers saying they wanna shop green, they wanna be conscious consumers, but they simply don't have the time to cut through the clutter and see who is really out there um, and, and being legitimate in their claims. And there are a lot of interesting ways that companies have tried to take their big picture sustainability agenda and make it relevant and meaningful in a more tangible way to consumers. I, one of my favorite examples is Marks and Spencer with their Plan A because there is no Plan B campaign. If you're not familiar with it, uh, they announced it a couple of years ago and it was a hundred point system of how they were going to reinvent themselves to be a sustainable company and it was very big, it was very up here. And it was lauded by a lot of people in the sustainability space, but consumers didn't know what that meant when they went into the store to buy socks or oranges or cereal. And so what Marks and Spencer has done a lot over the last couple of years is take, that, take those 100 points and make them very specific and relevant to the shopper experience. I'm sure you guys have all seen Burt's Bees print ads. Uh, and this, this one is showing how do you get all the nourishing without the not so nice, and it compares the ingredients that are in Burt's Bees products to what's in conventional personal care products and cuts through all that confusing clutter. And again, the Brita and Nalgene example is a very simple one for consumers to get. I want to also acknowledge that there is tension between some of these barriers. Uh, there is somewhat of a conflict between not wanting to sacrifice any reasons to purchase a product with low cost. I mentioned Pangea, it's great products, I love using them, but they're not cheap. And so at some point you are gonna, there's a little bit of a rub there. Similarly, if we say we want more selection, that's great, but manufacturers aren't gonna put it out there unless there is a desire to purchase them. And if there is somewhat of a little bit of pressure to consume less, those are going to be at odds. And then finally, for every consumer that wants proof of claims, there is one who says when you do prove it, that's too much information and I'm on information overload. And so the point of this is not to say that, forget about it, it's all in conflict. The point is to understand, you need to understand who your consumer is and what their specific barriers are. And one of these may weigh out over the others and that's of course what you need to address in your marketing. So just to conclude, um, probably no sustainability presentation would be complete without a quote from our new president that we are the change that we have been waiting for. He said that on numerous times. Um, this is my seventh Lojas Forum, and I have to say that 
it's true. We are specific to sustainability. We're the people we've been waiting for. There's a wonderful energy and sense of optimism and creativity within this room, and we need to pull those resources together. And I truly believe, and we truly believe, that with innovation, creativity, and careful communication, these barriers, which may feel like giant Mount Everest right now, will not be as big as we think they are once we start down that road. So thank you very much for your time. Steve and I will be here the rest of the conference. And we look forward to